What is going to happen to school districts and colleges in fall of 2020? And Quicken Loans is filing an IPO. We'll break it down next on Tool Time. I'm Tom Tool, she's Jess Lyon, and we are Zooming and talking about some hot topics this week, locally, nationally, and in the real estate space. So it's been kind of a slow news week, Jess, right? I mean, I know you kind of said the it's same boring. thing to me. Well, and, you know, it's a ho- it was a coming off a holiday weekend, these things happen. So yeah. not, not overly concerned about that. The biggest thing I found, and I, I know we talked about this, is you know, there's, a, there's a big push from the White House right now. Um, President Trump on Wednesday threatened to withhold federal funding if schools don't reopen in the fall. And then he lashed out at federal health officials over school reopening guidelines that he feels are impractical and expensive. So what do you think about all this, Jess? So going off of what I had said last week, getting back to living as normally and safely as possible, having guidelines and sticking to them, I think that's exactly what needs to be done. And there are, if we read through the article, CDC guidelines outlining what it looks like going back to school for kids. Um, You know, desks six feet apart. There's a bunch of different things, barriers put up, things like that. Um, But, you know, whether schools do go back or not, if they don't, there is that bigger glaring issue of, okay, well, what happens to those parents who don't have an extra parent at home or have to go back to work? Like if if we're not going back, like I feel like that is the big like question mark. What do we do in that instance? And for those families who do not have the luxury of having someone else at home to watch or teach their kids, you know, lower income families or something like that, that's going to be a, a big hit. Yeah, I think that that is the biggest issue. I mean, if you look at what the CDC said, um, and and the uh, they came out and and they have guidelines that recommends that you, like you said, wear masks when possible, mm-hmm. spread out desks, stagger schedules, eat meals in classrooms instead of the cafeteria, which is probably a big one, and then put physical barriers between the bathroom sinks. I mean, th- there's a safe way to do this. If a restaurant can open and have people inside, or a business can open, schools could do the same thing, uh, and you know, even the, uh, the CDC's director, Dr. Robert Redfield, um, he emphasized their only recommendations, and he's urging schools to find a way to reopen while minimizing the spread of, of COVID-19. So yeah, that, that, that's pretty critical here. Uh, New York City announced Wednesday that most students are going to re- uh, return to their physical classrooms two or three days a week and learn online the rest of the time. I mean, there, you know, there's, there's people in Virginia saying this stuff. I know in, in Lower Marion schools, they're talking about two days on the beginning of the week, then a day to sanitize, then two days off. So, wow. you know, the, the bigger problem here, though, is you look at the economic impact of all this. And if schools right. don't go back, one, you're either forcing kids, to, people, families, like hire like a nanny or some sort of child care. So then again, that's disposable income or income that would have gone into the economy that's gone. Secondly, some people can't even afford to do that because right. like, you know, public schools, you pay property taxes for or you pay your lease for or, or whatever. And that's how you get into those schools. So that's the biggest issue here. And unfortunately, unless something changes, and I'm, I'm clear there's probably a solution if everyone works together for once, which hasn't happened here like at all. Uh, that's a whole nother issue. The biggest issue is parents are going to have to pick. Do I want to keep my job or do I want to teach my kids from school? And, you know, what happens if they, they can't make that choice? I mean, are they going to have to sell their homes? Are they going to, I mean, we talked about the economic impact of, of real estate being shut down. And this is very similar because a lot of families are two income families. A lot of families, they need both jobs to get by and have the kind of lifestyle that they want. So there's a real challenge here. And yeah. that's what I'm most concerned about. So I, I agree with the president in that, this has got to open somehow because otherwise these families are going to be screwed. I mean, you can't, you can't sit here and tell me that working from home is going to be more efficient than returning to your job. I I mean, in some cases it can be, but some of these jobs, you can't do that. Some people are essential workers. Like what if it's like a nurse and a police officer? That's not that uncommon. Uh, So, you know, these people are going to have to go back to their jobs and it's, it's, it's going to hurt these families. And that's what I'm most worried about here. 
Yeah, the conversation definitely needs to be about how we do this in the safest way possible. I was talking to an educator over the weekend and they were saying they're trying to troubleshoot different, you know, ways to keep everybody safe. One of them being, you know, before every student comes in in the morning, have them fill out like a survey on an iPad or, you know, have their parent do it. And if it gets the green check or like they answered all these questions, like you haven't been exposed, you haven't been experiencing any of X, Y, Z, and you're good to go in for the day. Um, and that's just one example, but that that's the conversation of how do we do this safely? Cause it needs to happen. Well, yeah. And so like I got, I got my haircut like 10 days ago, walked in, took my son with me. We got a temperature check at the door. We wow. had to answer a form before we went in. Um, and it was sent like as a Google form. So you're talking about the same sort of process mm -hmm. that, Hey, and we had to do the same thing when we show a home. Like, have you been sick? Have you had a temperature, et cetera, et cetera. And right. then, so all of a sudden, you've answered the questions, you've done a temperature check, if you're doing that every day. And one of the things that probably will make a lot of sense, I know uh, Lower Marion schools talked about this, is that uh, having the parents drop their kids off rather than get on the bus. And what that'll do is that eliminates like that commingling, there's all those people there, then the parents can answer the questions and do those things. Now, you know, this is for elementary school, right. this isn't for middle and high school, so probably a different process. But none of that sounds unreasonable to me. None of that sounds like it's something that people can't roll with. And, you know, for the, those, those two income families where your parents, I mean, you know, I was taking my kids to school three days a week for forever. I mean, it just happened. I made it work and that was it. So there's ways to do this. And that's where, you know, that's where these school districts, like every, they need to get on the same page because there's a, there's also health risks that will be posed if people don't go back to school, right? Like you got these young right. kids where they're building their immune system you don't quarantine healthy no. people. Um, so I, I think there, there's another, and there's a lot of research that backs that up. So, you know, opening in the fall, I think it's going to be a really, really important thing. Uh, and th there, there's, a, there's a way to do it. And, you know, to be very clear, the learning is better in person, right? So we went through, and I can tell you personally, like our son, he's great. He does his own thing. He's very, you know, he, he, he likes learning. Our daughter is in kindergarten, probably needs a little more help. And we're worried she's a little behind right now. We hired a tutor for her over the summer to kind of compensate for that. Yeah. Uh, and it just, it's just like reading. It's not anything crazy. It's one day a week. But that extra yeah. work, I'm clear, is going to help her. Mm -hmm. And the point is, this is going to continue to happen for the kids that really need the instruction. And think about the economic impact that that's going to have in the future if everyone starts to fall behind. I mean, how long does this go on for? It would be absolutely crazy. And like you said, towards the end of the article, it mentioned this too. It's not just, you know, the health aspect of it physically, you know, there's that social growing that you need to do, especially at a young age. So a hundred percent, I mean, finding a way to get the kids back safely together. That's the objective that all of everybody, the educator, educators, people in the community should even be pitching in and giving some ideas on how to do it as well. Well, there's enough smart people at these schools to come up with, with a solution. And I know, you know, and, and I, I can tell you from my experience, because I'm like on the other side of this as a parent. Yeah. That our, our school district, we've been getting emails. They said, if we can open, we're going to open. So, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of, you know, I, and, and the teachers want to go back too. I mean, that, that's, that's what I've seen, you know, from, from the, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but the majority of them, they want to go back. They want to teach their kids. They want to get back to work. And there's a safe way to do it. I mean, you don't, you can wash your hands and wear a mask and check temperatures and do all, and, and fill out a questionnaire every day. If that's all we have to do to go back to school. Let's do it and get this BS over with. I agree. Let's see what happens. Okay. This is going to be an interesting one. So, you let me know. Yeah, I'll, believe me, I'll be letting I'll be letting you guys know for sure. I so, know. <laughs> um, fingers crossed here. So, on on the real estate side, yeah, very interesting article that came out in the past uh, uh, the past day or so. Quicken Loans on Tuesday filed paperwork for an IPO revealing that it hopes to land on the New York Stock Exchange using the Rocket Company's uh, mortgage um, and uh, or Rocket Company's uh, trading symbol. Rocket Mortgage is one of the probably more well-known um, brands in the umbrella company. And, you know, th there, there's a lot to unpack in this article here. So what do you think about this IPO, uh, Jess? What do you think what this means for real estate? There's a lot of questions that need to get answered here. Yeah, I'm not surprised somebody's trying this. Um, many companies are. Everybody wants that one-stop shop, whether, whether it be in real estate or we already see it in travel. You can see it in your life and fitness. You obviously 
you're seeing it in real estate. Um, everybody just wants to get, go to one place, have smooth service and get things done quickly. And I think that Rocket Mortgage, I mean, Rocket, Quicken, I've had some bad experiences with Quicken. So hopefully- So has everybody else, by the way. Like, let's be clear. Their service has not been great. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they're going to be, you know, moving into, you know, real estate as well and just ha like connecting you, realtor, investing or financing, everything like that, you're going to have to pick up, you know, maybe you should focus on getting really good at one thing first, like, you know, processing your loans and getting back to the clients and all this stuff rather than like having your hands in all these bonds. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, and, and this is what consumers want. I mean, people want to be yeah. able to go to their phone, select a house on a website, hit a button and make an offer and be able to go get the video tour and everything else. So this is another threat to traditional real estate companies. I mean, I'm clear this is the direction the industry is going. If you talk about scalability and doing more business, I mean, there's other companies that are doing the same thing too, that right. are, you know, that, that are, that are changing their business model in order to in order to you know, partner with people. So I, I, I went a little deeper on this because I saw the IPO and we all know about Rocket Mortgage and you know, Quicken mm -hmm. Loans and all that. So before the show, we were, we were talking a little bit and we went onto their website, did a little bit of a dive into how it works because they have seven different companies under the Rocket Umbrellas company. Um, and they include businesses focused on personal loans, car sales, consumer real estate. And that was the one that interested me the most. It's so are they hiring their own agents? Are they partnering with somebody? So I went on their site and saw a couple testimonials and there was a few agents on there uh, that look like they, they, they're Rocket Mortgage Partners and uh, they're, they own their own brokerages or they're, they're, with, they're, with, they're with different companies. So what I, and it's kind of these mega team sort of partnerships where they're doing five, six, 700 transactions a year. And I don't see it being that different than what we've already kind of seen happen with companies like Realtor.com and Zillow, mm -hmm. where instead of, you know, instead of having just, you buy leads from them, you convert them and you pay them a flat fee, they have a partner they work with and they, 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 they take a referral fee off the top. So, and this is well known throughout the industry that both these companies are going that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it being any different. And to me, it makes a lot of sense. And this is the threat that brokerages aren't seeing right now. When I talk about threat, I mean, Big brokerages like the like the big companies, Realogy, Remax, mm -hmm. Berkshire Hathaway, or Home Services, which is the parent company, now Compass, like all these people. This is the threat that's out there. The tech companies, because Rocket Mortgage, they're not a great mortgage servicer. They're a tech company that has everything streamlined to process loans. That's what that's really what they are in my view. And you know, their service is kind of like everybody else with that. When you look at some of the other big box companies, this is the tech side coming after traditional real estate brokerages. This is the threat that these big brokerages, the CEOs of these companies aren't anticipating. And it's going to be more and more. There's going to be more companies trying to do this, just like iBuyers, just like everything else, because they want a piece of that pie. They want a yeah. piece of the real estate commission pie. And that's what it's all coming down to here. So this is not surprising. Uh, it, it's uh, just another example of what we, we've talked about this on the show a couple times. Uh, yeah. And you know, if you look at the Rocket brand, I mean, that's, that's a huge part of Quicken's business. So, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Um, and, you know, what, what they've done too is they've also like built a remote workforce during the pandemic. And that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's some of the, that's a lot of these companies are pivoting and shifting. Uh, just like, I mean, you know, like Facebook's doing it, Zillow's doing it, all these big tech companies. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not surprised. It's just another person throwing their hat in the ring to get a piece of this. And we're going to see a big shift in the real estate industry, I'm clear, over the next 18 to 24 months, if not sooner, with more and more business getting done this way. And more teams, I feel like, are going to be, you know, looking at, oh, what, look, that, that team is doing 600, 700 transactions with that. I mean, stepping away from Remax or Keller or whatever and going to something like that, Zillow or Rocket or whatever, I feel like that's the direction that teams are going to be going with as well. Well, you don't have to step away from your brokerage. I mean, I just want to, and, and, and I mean, it, I don't think it's that. It's, it's going to be what brokerage model is going to make sense for you where if you're running a team, what's going to be the best way to go? And Streamline everything. Of, Remax needs to, you know, step that up. 
Yeah, and Remax is probably one of – I mean, they're more set up that way, I would say, than the other companies because they're franchised or independently owned. I mean, when you're dealing with, like, a corporate um, – you know, a, a corporate structure like in Berkshire Hathaway or something else, it's a lot different. Right. And, you know, the, the, the brokerage is going to have to play ball here with these. I right. mean, if, if, someone's, if someone is, uh, you know, looking for a referral fee or a portion of the funds and, and streamlining the business to you and also doing all the work, by the way, um, and, and, and getting these people ready to go, then, you know, what I see is the, these companies are going to be in trouble. And, and also, it's not just Remax. Agents are going to start getting squeezed. And if you're an agent right now and, you're relying on maybe only one or two things to generate business. Like you, you need to get into a, an area where you can specialize in and your right. skills are going to shine because this is going to start to happen more and more. I mean, if this sure. is the consumer wants, they want it to be easy. They don't want to have a lot of time spent and they just want to move ahead. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So we got a quote here. I actually, I thought of this quote because it was summertime and obviously like the Will Smith song, but, uh, it's not the quote, what the quote's about. Will Smith's a pretty, you know, well, uh, well accomplished guy. He's from the Philadelphia area. And I, I, I've heard this before. I love this. So too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Jess, what do you think? To me, this whole quote, I love Will Smith. Um, he's just so very real. And to me, it's saying, who are you trying to impress with, you know, spending money that you don't have, spending time with people you don't like? Look at what you're really interested in, what you really, you know, are passionate about. Are you working a job that you really don't like, that you, like, you know, really don't see yourself accomplishing anything in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Stop. Who are you trying to impress? I mean, obviously, you have your family and everything to support, but, you know, don't try to impress anybody is the what I'm get, getting from this. And, be real to yourself. Don't try to, you know, live outside of your means, basically. Well, you got to do the things that, that, that are going to be right for you. And, and there's um, someone came to mind. Um, it's, it's actually a Peloton instructor. She went to Villanova University uh, yeah. for law school, Robin Arzon. She's like the VP of programming there now. And she quit being a lawyer. And now she's a Peloton instructor. So think about that. You know, being a lawyer, I'm not saying that's a bad, I'm not saying that's a bad job or anything like that. But there yeah, are people. Yeah. They go to law school because they feel they have to do that to impress people. Or that's what their family wants. Like, we've all heard that before. Like, my, my, my dad wants me to do this or whatever else. And the law is a noble profession. Like, I'm not it, – it's not about lawyers. That's just an example of, you know, someone who did that and she wasn't doing it for the right reasons. And there's so many people out there. They want to buy a certain kind of car or they want to move to a certain kind of neighborhood. Not because that's what they want. It's because they feel like they, they need to do that to be accepted yeah. or to impress yeah. people. And – you know, if you're hanging out with people you feel you need to impress, they're probably not the right people you should be hanging out with that are going to really level you up in the way you want to be leveled up, meaning with your business skills or with the kind of life you want to have. So there, there's so many things to unpack in there. But what that tells me is you got to have the right peer group, number one, or the right people you're surrounding yourself with, whether it's your coworkers, your team, you know, your friends, I mean, your, your wife and kids or your husband or whatever. I mean, it's got to be the right people, number one. And then two, it also speaks to me about wealth building because too many people are spending money on dumb shit. Nick, you're going to need to bleep that out. Or that you buy, <laughs> it's like something you don't need or it's not practical or you get something and you have some gigantic loan payment on it. Like, and it's finance. That's not how you build wealth. And wealth yeah, building, even you know, we, yeah. and we'll, like, think about what we talked about earlier with like being worried about like what's going on with, you know, going to school and, and all that stuff. If you even just save a little bit of money and like, like a month, just, and that can, that can grow substantially and not enough people focus on that stuff. And, and to me, that's, you know, that's how to be in a better spot than, 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 than when something goes wrong like this. So yeah. to me, it's, you know, being smart, like not, you know, spending money for the right reasons. Like if you're, you know, if you're, it's a mortgage payment, great, like smart move. That's a big bank account. If it's you're renting some house that's ridiculous just to impress people, it's a waste of money. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, so it's, it's one, you shouldn't be in a position like that because you're not hanging out with the right people in the first place. And two, be smart with your money. I mean, right now, this is, I mean, I think everyone's kind of learned they need to be a little, little better with, with managing their funds over the past four or five months here. Absolutely. Good stuff. Amen. All right. We'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.